Yo, what up, everybody? Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Good. Hello. Hey, Matt. Up, Matt. How is everybody today? Good. Good. Don't... How about you? Doing well, kind of back from the dead from between between KubeCon and just like family illness as four teenagers get to the end of their school year and yeah. all get the flu. Um, <laughs> not COVID, just the flu. Oh, you um, were at KubeCon? I should have, we should have met up. I don't know. Why. No, 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 I wasn't there. I, I, um, I had planned on going, but, but couldn't um, do this some various life stuff. But, um, but no, I mean, a lot of people were off, off the grid, so to speak. And, and occupied um so uh, yeah i'm still uh i've been hopping around a bunch of time zones myself since then because i was at kubecon and i was in california and in dallas and now i'm on the east coast and so or i guess eastern time zone so i've uh i have no idea what day or time it is <laughs> so i'll put a link to the um the agenda and the meeting notes and slack here please do sign in there's really there's really two big things on the agenda for today uh one hey hi henrik uh one is um one is a, a brief recap by bartek on uh the meeting that did happen in spain for those that weren't there uh it wasn't recorded i believe we do have notes but at least this way we'll have something for posterity about what transpired around the observe k eights project and some other stuff um and and some takeaways. Uh, and then uh, the larger uh, issue of the day, uh, adding profiling to open telemetry as a signal type. Uh, Ryan will drive that. Uh, and we have Alalita joining us at the half an hour, at the half hour. So I'm just going to front load the other stuff. Um, lastly, um, I can put a link in, in the meeting notes, but the TOC meeting, the first Tuesday TOC meeting was just the last hour. And we, as usual, uh, just covered what we've been up to uh, briefly. Um, so with that, uh, is, does anyone want to add things to the agenda before we start? I also need to say, uh, I almost forgot, uh, this is a CNCF um, meeting. The code of conduct, uh, of course, does apply. Um, does anyone want to add anything to the agenda that's not, not there? Um, OK. Henrik, I love your new episode, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm working on a summary for the week of KubeCon. So I was in the middle of the post-production. So stay tuned. Awesome. Yeah, we'll all shout it from the rooftops when you post. So that'd be great. All right. Well, uh, with that, I think, Bartek, do you want to kick things off and provide sort of your 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 sure. takeaways from KubeCon and, and any insights uh, and yeah. tell us what happened? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Uh, no, yes. Yes, but we don't yeah, see. Uh, if, if yes, speaking. yes, uh, I'm on, on the phone. All right, so yeah, thanks everyone for joining. So uh, just to recap, um, I added a small link to you know, the meeting notes you have below. Uh, they are very, very simple, but this is the high level what happened. Um, we had like one hour, actually two hours on the KubeCon Monday. Um, we call those things like usually like developer summits or some kind of meetings for those who are really, really interested in what we are doing. And, um, and yeah, we have um, quite a uh, um, nice session. We have fully packed room and people couldn't even get in. So, so definitely observability is you know, one of the hottest topics still. And, um, and yeah, we started with some introduction, then we, we discussed the white paper and uh, you know, the kind of status of it. And, and how people can contribute and, and kind of get, get uh, some information about that and read that even now. Uh, second thing is, uh, you know, Michael and, and Henrik shown amazing demo. Um, it, it was kind of like, uh, you know, I think uh, only basics what we want to accomplish, but uh, it's already, it already started a, a many, many questions around observability solutions. Uh, best practices so that was that was the the, the, the really really useful um kind of thing to do and um yeah kind of the, the we should we should kind of uh, invest in that more 
Um, something from my side, uh, and I bet uh, Henry Chris here maybe has some, some thoughts as well. I think um, we realize that we have a lot of community members um, and, and lots of end users actually. We were asking specifically about those people who are not maybe involved with any vendor uh, that actually want to use observability or looking for approaches. And, you know, most of the room were were, were around those topics. And um, many of them are starting their journey, right? And I think what, what at least uh, it told me is that um, we are still missing a lot of information, beginner information, beginner guides, and those kind of index pages that can kind of um, narrow down, uh, you know, in what direction they might want to go and, and what documents and, and then kind of references they might uh, need to uh, follow to learn more, right? So I, I was kind of like very um, surprised, but like was deeply surprised that there is still <laughs> a lot of work around um, advocating and, and evangelizing better observability and how to not get lost, right? So that's my TLDR from uh, from this event. Uh, it was pretty, pretty amazing. Good job, everyone. And hopefully we have some people from that uh, on the call and maybe on the future calls, of course, we try to kind of uh, shout out to, 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 to people, uh, for, pe for people to join us and, and, and uh, join our effort, yeah. When I got to the room, it was so packed. I had COVID fear and did not want to cram in there with all those people. So I passed on it. Uh, a certain level of tolerance as I speak to you from RSA conference where people aren't even wearing masks. It's like crazy. There's going to be so many cases here. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. We, we fortunately we have Richie who are you know just very brutal about those who didn't have yeah, masks. Yeah, yeah. So no, we, that was, we that were was safe, good. but the, the same you are right. Very good yeah. at KubeCon. Yeah, I've heard a few I times think. that it was a packed room. Uh, any guesstimate as to actual headcount? I don't know how big the room was. <laughs> yeah, um, that room. I, I have pictures somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> two hundred maybe. But the thing is, is during the conference they had moderators that limited a seat per person and no one standing. In the event before KubeCon, like this meetup, there were people crammed in there, standing around like it was wall to wall people. There was no space, so I just didn't feel comfortable personally. So I, oh, wow. I um, skipped it. Yes, so, I wanted so, so to go. I just didn't show up early enough. That's all. I would assume we can get a list of attendees then um, that the, the, the CNCF, I mean, if they were taking They were not or, taking, because oh, this see. was a pre-meeting. Because it was just thing, a loosey-goosey, I see. They didn't scan badges. There was no moderator. Like uh, That's disappointing. I see your on. point. Yeah. Okay. We have lists of, uh, I know that there, my colleague did a session on open telemetry. I did the Jaeger maintainer. Uh, session and Bartik also did a session on several. Uh, you had two, right? Bartik, I want to say I saw one. Yeah, free. I had free, but uh, free. yeah. So you can get a, we can get lists from the CNCF of those yeah. sessions, I'm sure, uh, you know, which are all related to observability. Yeah, I'll put something in the observability channel later today, but uh, long running work item. We actually now have, I can say, uh, successfully provisioned or ha have had provisioned a Google Drive for the tag. So we actually have like a neutral open place where we can put stuff. Uh, so that might be a great place to put that. In a bunch of I just didn't know if people want, like I work at a vendor, we obviously don't want people's names because that's like, you know, not good. But if we want to use them, if you want to use them personally, Matt, for some type of outreach or something, I think it's totally um, cool. I, I, I think if there are folks that self-identified and like yeah. gave their contact info because they were interested. I would want to send out an email yeah. blast from the tag to saying, hey, thanks for joining us. Here's notes. Come to our meetings if you like. Just just and, yeah. and leave it to there. I, I don't mean anything more targeted or nefarious than that. Yeah. Just, just a thanks for thanks for joining us and, and here's where you can find us. Uh, yeah, I don't know that there's like any kind of like reach out to me thing that attendees do in specific um but i don't know you could ask in the are you part of the marketing channel and or you can ask matt you know matt right yep, yeah I'll just ask up. matt and say like what can we do mm -hmm. from a tag perspective to try to reach out to people at kubecon that went to observability sessions that might be interested in the tag i don't know 
That's a great idea. I'll, I'll take an action to chase that down. I think there are right. some some more feedback we can just sorry just just to chime in. There are other kind of things we could just think about. You know what what could we could CNCF and we could do better. Like definitely we need a bigger room. So for example, like on our tag observability uh, meeting, or so not meeting, but actually the talk about the introduction, there were like less people than on the, the you know this meeting, right? Because probably people have have more energy. It was like a dedicated day which were much less kind of content. And I think this speaks for itself. Like we should invest in that maybe room more than even on the top, right? So all but those people think want, we could give. They also want like, you have to pay for the other one, right? The one that's before the conference. And not, not those ones, those ones were included. Uh, they were it, was not the, it was not co-located yeah. even. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the co-located. No, I went to the one that was just the day on the Monday, I want to say. Exactly. Was that, was, that was as a, as a ticket, normal ticket. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, to to come to just uh, re mention, uh, yeah, I think there is a, in open telemetry was the same feedback. People want, are looking for getting started guides, examples. Uh, they they all, they all see things coming in, but it seems that there is a large portion of the community who is not very confident on how to get started. So I think we we should put a lot of effort. I'm trying to internally get some budget for a project that I would like to run in January. So I'm planning to do like a observability tour. Um, and uh, the idea is that uh, I will probably find some company who is, will be able to host those various meetups. I'm doing various meetups in various cities in the US. I think that could be a way of getting speakers, getting examples, getting, and try to bring that community together and speak and exchange and network. I think that will be great for the future. Um, yeah, because out of KubeCon, which is really big, uh, people sometimes have the chance to come and fly in, but there's a big portion of the community who's don't go to KubeCon at all. So I think having smaller, say, um, meetings, regional, I mean, on locations, that I think that could be very useful for, for the, the entire community, for sure. I had a question too about the, uh, I know you said you gave like a recap on the white paper, maybe um, here we could also, yeah, I'm curious to know sort of how that's going and if, you know, some of the things uh, that we're trying to promote more about, you know, whether it's like tutorials or that kind of stuff, maybe that's somewhere where we can, you know, add add links or something or or just add some type of information or I guess yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious about how the white paper is going and if it's sort of uh, moving closer to what we were like hoping it would ultimately accomplish. Yeah, sure. So um, if you want to check if it goes along what you, what you think we wanted to accomplish, you can already check that. It's already on the, uh, on the our repository, right? And um, we were just making last you know, read proof and trying to just essentially like have final, 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 final touches. And we got a little bit stuck on, on our review, on our kind of stamp that this is what all we want to do. So it's like kind of, we try to be maybe too perfect, right, in this. So um, I'm definitely, you know, after, after this meeting, it, it, it was so clear that people really need that uh, in, in really not even like, you know, full all the details enlisted but at least you know the basics um so we should we should kind of uh, make sure we can make it officially public and officially kind of stable um as soon as possible right but like the content is already there it just last touches yeah. so if you have any feedback just uh, we really you know literally make uh, any issue or like or um, changeable way yeah, so, so th thank you for that. Um, so some of the original uh, folks that were driving the white paper uh, have, for various reasons, not been quite as active in the last year, um, you know, just due to, I, I believe, just to time constraints and whatnot. Um, can, but Bartek, are you, are you on, on point to kind of drive that to completion? I mean, I think that would make sense given your involvement all throughout, but I want to just be explicit that it does have an owner and it's being driven um, to a point where we can actually release it, uh, uh, or at least declare doneness on this version of it. Uh, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's have a clear, exactly. Let's have a clear owner. It was kind of like fuzzy 
I, yeah, I was already touching it. I was blocked a little bit, but on other people, but um, sounds like, yeah, I mean, we, we have, yeah, to it. so yeah, you, you can to, put that on me. Great. If you want to take it over and, you know, obviously anything that's needed or if we need to communicate stuff or bring people in or like, you know, if you could, if you could just provide us um, or provide the tag rather, you know, some guidance around how they can engage or what's left, you know, what's the gap, etc. That'd be wonderful. And I can follow up with you out offline to make sure uh, that any existing uh, prior art uh, is actually all kind of coalesced together because there's, there's obviously quite a lot of, of, of effort. Um, I believe also we have, if memory serves, an issue outstanding to review the Chinese translation of the white paper, which has been translated, but we're waiting for someone who uh, is fluent in Mandarin <laughs> to kind of give it to give it a thumbs up. So, so, that, so that's something that we need that I don't have. I know to. a lot of people if you need someone. We do. So that'd be wonderful if you, if, particularly if you okay. need like someone with some domain expertise. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, Ru Shang and also built yeah. Skywalking. He's he's usually really helpful. Oh, I'll cool. reach out to Wu Shang. Thank you. He's a super cool guy. Awesome. Yeah. And I guess I guess just to clarify there, I, I guess I was kind of seeing if if there's any way potentially we should alter the white paper given the feedback from the like people who's who I guess like mentioned what they were looking for at KubeCon. I guess that's kind of, um, I, so I wasn't there. So I'm not sure if there's a way that we could, um, or maybe if there was even just like an issue of like, hey, people said they wanted content more geared towards this, that maybe, I mean, I don't know. I don't wanna, I guess, move the, uh, the goalpost there as we are trying to get a first version out and maybe we do it for like a second version or a separate paper even altogether. But I was just curious if there was, um, you know, some way we could put out some content that would uh, sort of uh, satisfy, you know, what people were saying that was missing um, when they were at the meeting. I, I don't know if you um, know the Google SRE uh, website uh, that is around the SRE book that was initially released, and they have come up with a lot of small, um, I would say, exercises or, or workshops or practice practical examples and you can go through i think you, the great the, uh, i mean um, again it's a uh, suggestion if we have the the white paper, paper who is you know very very stable well, format then we could take advantage of the uh, observed demo environment and do some exercise where people can walk through and try to apply those concepts in a demo environment but whatever but it will be more more uh, because they will look at the screen they will understand a bit more the actual concept and the the value of, of that uh, again that's that's the suggestions i don't know what, what you think about that but i think it would be great as a next step to provide even more uh getting uh getting started or, or onboarding uh, tutorials for, for for the community that's kind of interesting maybe uh, could you put the link somewhere what did you say google sre website yeah let, let me uh, find it out i will bring it uh it's uh sre.google i want to say is the website for all the books and stuff yeah you just go to sre.google they have all the sre books and everything else is on there you can get uh, for free nice it's a really useful site I already sent the Chinese uh, PR to him, Matt, so I'll let you know. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Thank you so much. But yeah, I will, I will on, on the white paper side, I will definitely compare that with what we have on the notes um, for that meeting. We have some outstanding topics and uh, yeah, totally. And uh, I, will be, I will try to have like summarization where we have gaps and where we need to, so we can make together the decision. Is it something we want to finish before release or not? So yeah. Yeah, and I, and I guess it, I mean, obviously, obviously, and so I mean, we just do the first version, wrapping up how it is now, and then sort of uh, as like a second iteration, and some of that stuff. Or Sorry, uh, who was that question to specifically? I don't know. I was just, I was just saying that's it wasn't a question. I guess I was uh, 
generally saying that we could, um, yeah, it's more of a statement than a question, I guess. Anyway, I think we finished the topic about the white paper so far. So yeah, I think so. Another one. Um, uh, briefly on the on, on the uh, the art of SLOs, um, I can also provide a link. But a month or two, I finished the O'Reilly book on rolling out SLIs and SLOs to an organization without making that organization curse your name. Um, it's quite a good book. Uh, um, I can probably pull it uh, and send a link. But um, yeah, highly recommended. Um, particularly on the the human aspect of that, right? How to how to not yeah, not, how to not make everyone hate you for trying to, to give tools. Anyway, um, so Al Olita is not here yet, but that's okay. Uh, I guess next up, Brian, do you wanna um, get into profiling? Sure, um, always. Uh, yeah, so I posted some links in the, uh, in the Slack channel there uh, about sort of, uh, yeah, there's like several links now, the video, so I guess, yeah, to back up, um, on Friday, we met with a, there's actually like a huge turnout of people, it was like, like plus people came to just generally um, this idea of getting, um, having profiles as an accepted uh, sort of, um, you know, event type in OTEL as um, yeah, as at a similar meeting to the one um, that this observability tag had, the hotel uh, like group had a similar meeting that was also very packed. And one of the biggest uh, like voted priorities there was people who were interested in um, profiling becoming a, I guess, yeah, at, in profiling as it's become more popular, a lot of companies have popped up around profiling and a lot of um, like cloud providers have added it as a part of their offering. And so people were saying that, um, I guess uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware, but that uh, with previous signal types in the past, I forget if it was logs or metrics, that um, a lot of people there were saying that, uh, that, the, that it, a lot of, um, I guess people who were doing logs or metrics before Otel uh, sort of like blessed a format for them um, had issues then trying to like go back and support the new sort of like standard format. And so, um, so yeah, it kind of seemed like profiling is at a good sort of in between point where enough people are doing profiling and enough, um, you know, formats exist where it's early enough as well that if there were a um, sort of standardized type that it would allow for the entire sort of ecosystem to move forward. Not only that, but move forward in a way that's consistent with the other signal types, logs, metrics, and traces, um, as I guess a lot of people here are probably familiar with as we kind of talk about this uh, briefly in the white paper as well. And so, um, so yeah, so that's sort of the, I guess, sort of um, context there. And so, yeah, so we met on Friday to sort of just have an introductory meeting where um, it was mostly just kind of getting various people and, um, you know, profiling developers uh, thoughts on, on this sort of effort and how it could move forward. What are some of the considerations that we need to have? All of that is sort of outlined in the, uh, I, I put the links both in the Slack channel and also in the uh, meeting notes for today. Um, so yeah, definitely take a look at those if you get a chance. But, um, but yeah, and so basically we, we talked a lot about that. We didn't come up with uh, the most concrete to-dos. I kind of added a section at the bottom with just some like general, um, you know, things that I felt would be good to uh, make progress on before we, you know, meet again as that group. But, um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to bring it up here, seeing as this is probably the biggest group outside of, um, you know, outside of Otel who would, you know, have a vested interest in this and, um, and sort of the expertise to kind of move this effort forward. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I, I kind of wanted to similarly here sort of talk with this group um, about 
just Otel in general and sort of uh, get get you guys perspective or you all's perspective on it and um, and sort of how we might be able to move forward ways that this tag can um, can uh, is distinctly positioned to help and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, that's a lot of information. I'm curious if anybody has any thoughts on this, uh, I guess, effort in general, this idea, this concept of um, getting profiling into OTEL basically. I think it's super excited. <laughs> this is great. Uh, but I, I think the market is waiting for that. That's great news for sure. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm curious here too, uh, maybe uh, if anybody wants to talk about it. I mean, obviously there's, you know, logs, metrics and traces that, um, you know, are already, I guess, at various stages of being supported in OTEL. Um, and I'm curious what people's experiences have been with, um, with those. Are you using them? Do you find it to be, uh, I guess, a, you know, yeah, like, I, I mostly want to better understand sort of how people are using the um, signals that are already out there so that as we try to um, kind of like, you know, also get profiling in there so that we don't necessarily make the same mistakes or have the same issues that some of these other signal types have had as they've, um, you know, got gained more popularity. And so I'd also be curious to hear if anybody has any thoughts on um, as users of logs, metrics, and traces, uh, and whether or not you're using OTEL, if you have any thoughts on sort of like how that has gone for you um, and ways that you feel like it could improve. Uh, be, and before we go into that, that thank, thank you, Ryan. And, be, and, and I, let, let's do that. But before we kind of drop into that, um, could you or someone else who might have some direct ex expertise here uh, kind of just highlight for the folks that might be new to this that are watching this recording later, um, the history around symbolic info and being able to kind of, you know, there's a general concern around OTEL. I think Liz uh, had a pretty cool, a pretty insightful comment um, in, in one of our Slack groups about this, um, uh, that, you know, this might finally be when OTEL needs to add some sort of comprehensive support for symbolic information uh, to assist with look at looking up symbols and, and other things. And as I'll say, for, from my perspective, as an aside commentary, were we to ever in hotel have, for example, execution tracing, like in, uh, you know, more, more traditional, you know, um, much, much lower level execution tracing, we would obviously need, need, need some, some variant of that. Um, yeah. Of, talk so, about, I know Bartek, I know you've got some experience here as well. Um, Yeah, but I didn't mean that right to Bartek, whomever. Yeah, I mean, I, I can talk a little bit about it. I'm curious sure. uh, if other people have thought. I mean, yeah, I mean, one thing that I would say related to that is just that, uh, I mean, I think that there's a big portion of that conversation also around EBPF as well. And I guess, you know, being able to find some way to, I guess, yeah, deal with symbols. I mean, it's just something that I guess is like newer that um, and is honestly kind of a, a tricky problem to solve in the quote unquote best way to do it. Uh, there's a lot of considerations that you have of, um, and then yeah, depending on what language you're using, there's sort of like different, uh, I guess like paths that you have to go down there. Um, I can speak from, uh, from like my experience with Pyroscope, like we do symbolization as well in like, I guess like a slightly different context, but um, basically just in order to uh, compress the data that we're sending as we're sending it around, um, we use uh, trees and tries in order to um, basically like compress symbols themselves. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a pretty massive topic that I don't know. Uh, we kind of brought it up in the context of profiling, since profiling is already like one uh, profiles tend to be very large compared to the other signals, and then two um, that profiling sometimes 
the data that you're getting is, um, you know, sort of like an address in memory or something that you ultimately want to be able to then transform into a function name or a file name or something like that. And so it is definitely, I would say, most relevant to profiling. But um, I feel like, yeah, like as as Matt said, it could be a topic in and of itself um, and used elsewhere. Uh, definitely. I mean, uh, I think logging can also have some of the same challenges just because uh, you're dealing with uh, unstructured data that doesn't have any bounds on it. Uh, so I think profiling actually you can build a better schema around it than logging for sure. It's easier to put into a schema. Um, but yeah, there's- You can support like both. Data. Awesome, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in concrete terms, uh, how might someone engage? Uh, I mean, is there a formalized working group in Hotel then that we've linked to? I know there's a doodle that's going around for a regular meeting, but just in terms of governance, I want to make sure that we're explicit about where uh, folks are congregating uh, and how others can join them. Uh, I know we've kind of got a, a number of, there's a Slack group uh, that's not on CNCF Slack, but a bunch of people in it, uh, 50 or so. Um, uh, and then I know Otel has its own. Our leader should be joining shortly, so she also can provide some context. But does anyone does anyone already know the answers? And could you yeah, um, as far as that goes, so yeah, it's still in the early stages. Honestly, the um, yeah, like the the typical process uh, is that you you know first kind of meet a couple. It's, it's similar to sort of how our working group here started. I guess you kind of meet a couple times, make sure that there's enough interest and enough sustained interest that, um, you know, that you can ultimately get someone who's going to like maintain it, someone who's going to sort of like- I, know, I, I meant like, is there like an issue in hotel that we don't have linked yet? I can go looking, but like, is there a formal working group that's been spun up? So you know, no, so yeah, so that's what I was getting to. So not yet. Okay, we're so we're, we're ahead of that. It's sort of, yeah, right. like, of, of doing that. I would say for now, the most uh, sort of centralized place for communication around this effort would be the um, in the CNCF, the hotel profiles oh, wow. channel, um, which I believe is linked somewhere. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's linked in the uh, in the tag observability channel as well. Uh, Liz posted it um and actually yeah, i wonder how many people are in there um yeah it's got like 81 people in there so i would say yeah it's uh yeah we're we're in the process of consolidating all the different um groups who are interested in this into that channel and then so yeah i, I would say generally to expect uh communication to most reliably happen there and then also on the issue itself uh that was started around uh you know two years ago or something about this I'm just dropping some links into the meeting notes for for what we do have so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I don't know. Um, yeah. If anybody has any thoughts, if not, I mean that's fine too. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to hear. Um, yeah, like if people are using Otel for like logs, traces, metrics, whatever um yeah like if they have any in anything any insights to share or any experiences to share around you know integrating it around um you know maybe the process of like switching from you know maybe before hotel existed for those things to using hotel for those things um how that process went anything along those lines would be helpful if people don't uh you know have stuff to share around there that's fine too but uh i just felt like this would be a good group to ask so, so we're trying to collect those uh, feedback from end user as of now on the yeah. uh, hotel and user group yeah um, i mean i think i think that one of the things that we want you know so i feel like a lot of these kinds of efforts can have a tendency to sort of uh you know um potentially drag on or you kind of like you know you make a lot of process you get to progress you get to the end and then people are like 
oh, this isn't going to work for me because X, Y, Z or something on those lines, which then makes it take longer. And, and so all that kind of stuff. And so um, I think with this, like one of the things that I feel like is important is, yeah, getting some of those, some of that kind of feedback um, and making sure we don't sort of like, you know, we account for those potential pitfalls early on. Um, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, so it really depends on the language uh, because as of now, most of the end user, there is, they have all, only uh, focus on tracing because it was the, the signal that was the most stable one. And then uh, metric has been announced uh, during Cube Valencia. So it's the, the, the very hard to get um, feedback from, from real uh, end users. But as of now, the most of the, the, the feedback depend, really depends on the language. Uh, depending on the language they're using, they have different experience and different... Uh, I would say uh, frustrations, depending on, for example, PHP was uh, uh, the customer was, that I interviewed. He was very, uh, he basically said he, he, it's too complicated and, and uh, it seems not stable yet. So let's wait a bit until something is better. Um, so most of the end user that were at the end user hotel group that we had um, in uh, Valencia, they were all looking for examples, more examples, more tutorials. They say that the, the few examples that they are currently available in the various repo are very Hello World oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very hard at the end after building a Hello World to get the actual value because it's basically one component. There is nothing interaction. So it's very hard to get meaningful uh, measurements out of the instrumentation done by open telemetry. So they were looking for more uh, suitable examples to get a, a better picture and better understanding on uh, the actual work that they need to do to implement it on their, in, within their environment. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I think things we could do there is, yeah, like one, make sure we have a uh, input from various languages early on to sort of avoid, you know, avoid that as much as we can. And then two, um, also sounds like a good uh, sort of use case for our like observe Kate's, um, you know, project here that we might be able to, um, yeah, to sort of add examples for different languages early on potentially or something along those lines. Um, you want to say something, Matt? Hey. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was just capturing some notes here. I think in addition to vendors that, that we've started to enumerating there, like Polar Signals, Cilium, Pixie, et cetera, um, Pyroscope is open source. Uh, th there's a variety of projects that I think we could identify in the landscape at large that might particularly benefit from deep and or rich um, integration, you know, with, with profiling via OTEL that there might be good demonstrators and or early adopters to vet some of the, the ideas. Um, uh, so I'll start a list there as well, but you know, um, in particular, yeah. I guess CPU bound things <laughs> would go to the front of the line, um, but depending on, you know, the specifics of the profile and how it captures idle time, you know, might be quite a bit more broad than that. Um, uh, Gaurav has their hand up. Hey. So I'm new to this forum, uh, so apologies if this Welcome. is a bit out of context. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, this is a super interesting topic. I would like to ask about uh, some of the, like two things here. Um, one is a minority view potentially on what would be the reasons to not do it, uh, Ryan. That, uh, that would be one. Uh, and, and to get a better understanding of that, I think will help you know make the solution most likely better for everyone. Um, second, um, wanted to ask about, uh, the, like, oh, I, I, maybe I'll let you answer that one and then we can go from there. Yeah. Um, I you, mean, could I'm, you just summarize ever so briefly the question again, uh, for the recording that my audio crackled. Oh, uh, you want? Uh, Matt, do you want me to summarize the question again? Uh, yeah, just the first one. I'm sorry. I, I had some sort of connection on my side and I didn't, I didn't hear the question. Uh, no worries. Yeah. I was asking about what's the minority view on like why we shouldn't include profiling in hotel. Um, oh, in our... I see. Is there a contrarian perspective? Just to... Yeah. Just to understand that. That's better. a great question. I, I don't know. 
Yeah. I mean, I would say the biggest contrarian perspective there is that um, profiling is new and that, you know, some would make the, some have made the argument that it's too new and that it needs to mature more before we, um, you know, before we come up with a um, sort of like standardized version of it. Um, I think that's definitely the most contrarian view. Um, I'm definitely biased towards um, having, so like, so I guess also for context around, um, you know, uh, I work on Pyroscope. It's an open source continuous profiler. We integrate with a bunch of different um, underlying profilers for various languages. And one of the things that we've found is that for each language, they do things slightly differently. So, um, you know, the way you get profiles in Ruby versus the way you get profiles in Go versus the way you get profiles with like, you know, Go will have like PPROF, for example, like Java has JFR. Um, in order for us to consolidate all of those and consume them in one sort of uh, unified way, we kind of had to do ourselves a lot of this sort of standardization. And, um, and so, yeah, so I'm definitely biased towards uh, thinking it is definitely necessary, but I could definitely see the argument that some people think that it should be that it should be more mature, um, which is why I brought up that point earlier that they were talking about at the hotel meeting where like, um, I wish I knew which one it was. I believe it was metrics that when hotel start added their, um, you know, support for metrics that like net had already had its own sort of API for it. And so it became this like massive headache where now you had to sort of like through the .NET API, you had to like, then it used the Otel API under the hood. And it was, I don't know, it seemed like it was a very, um, and don't quote me on that. It may have been logs. I believe it was metrics, but um, it, then it, it turned into a big headache. And so I think there's also an argument for not letting things get too mature before you come up with a standardization because then everybody sort of digs their feet in their own unique ways of doing things and it sort of uh, makes it harder to then go back and undo things that people have already built on top of and i think this just being new it, it offers a good opportunity to sort of like standardize things from the beginning assuming we do a lot um you know the the sort of requisite amount of uh, forethought in making sure that we are thinking about building it for the future versus, um, you know, not painting ourselves into a corner. Got it. That was super helpful. Um, I just have one thing to add to that, Ryan, um, which is uh, it might be interesting to take some of the examples from the, the efforts that are outside sort of observability. For example, the one that I'm familiar with is around um, smart home stuff and, it, and this is completely different, but they had very similar issues. Um, and Google and Amazon and other companies were trying to figure out an interface. So um, mm -hmm. how do you create something that is working for a subset, but also allow for innovation on other stuff that, you know, uh, individual companies and individual smart home providers would like to, to kind of provide. So um, if I remember correctly, then the matter is the protocol um, where they had similar issues. So we might want to pick up some design patterns from uh, some of these interfaces. That that, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good good suggestion because I, um, again, um, uh, matter is definitely evolving. And, and I, I think that at the you know, layer that we are looking at right now with Ryan, you know, what Ryan was mentioning in terms of profiling uh, you know, data, uh, it's definitely a layer that needs to be integrated into matter if you really were to you know, say, look at smart devices or any kind of IoT devices or client you know, components actually into intersecting into the larger observability stack. Right, because fundamentally today, what you're seeing is that uh, there's a lot of emphasis on all, most of the observability projects with server-side, you know, integration. Right, and 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 as you see the world, and Matter is a good example of this, um, where you see the client, you know, world also intersect, and and needs to have that same level of. Um, 
observability with the metrics and and the logs that are that would be pushed from there yeah no that certainly is a good point i was also trying to draw the attention to the fact that some of the problems that they are facing in standardizing that interface are sound similar to what hotel is facing mm. uh they are similar yes but they're not yeah. at the same layer right yeah. i i understand yeah. yeah. Um. So I just gonna chime in. We've got five minutes left, so I want to make sure. Uh, 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 Kamal or Kamal. Uh, I'm not sure how. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Kamal. Kamal. <laughs> Sorry. I know you had your hand up. Hello, everyone. Uh, the name is Kamal. Uh, I'm working for Polar Signals, and we are building a observability the profiling tool uh, called Parka as well. I just want to comment on the SDK part of the hotel initiative, I guess, but this will be a little redundant after Ryan's last comments, because like what we observed, we probably don't know what we don't know yet for most of the part around profiling. And with the hotel, we had this issue, I guess it was again with the metrics. I'm also uh, one of the maintainers of client Golang, Prometheus client Golang. So I'm like working on the client side of the uh, metrics part as well. I don't remember anyone actually like contacted us from the hotel side and we worked on the metrics SDK as well. So all in all, what I want to say is we should definitely hold on the SDK parts and maybe focus on the OTLP and how we can actually standardize the wire format first. And one part of this is definitely eBPF. We are building a profiler based on eBPF and when you use the eBPF, there, is, there isn't much need from an SDK. Aside from maybe correlating with the other signals, I guess that's the goal of Hotel as well. Mm -hmm. Somehow include the correlation. But one other thing, you can actually have the correlation without uh, a need of SDK as well, or just, uh, I don't know, uh, really minor touch from the SDK itself, which we actually demonstrated this during KubeCon with Wartech on the Thanos maintainer track as well. So yeah, the gist of it, let's, if we can do this, that was also the idea from the last meeting, I guess. Let's focus on the OTLP part first and how we can actually optimize this format. And this includes a lot of pieces like how we are we going to include the symbolization information and how we actually encode that symbolization info, information in an efficient way. Maybe then we can start working on the SDKs. Yeah, I, Kumail, I, I agree with you because I think that, you know, TLP is the first layer that we actually should look at to be able to handle, you know, the detailed, uh, you know, uh, nuances of the eBPF data itself, right? And, and then uh, I think SDKs are, um, you know, ideal for instrumentation, but don't necessarily, you know, uh, need to be as complex yeah. Or, or, or extended for only eBPF or eBPF specifically, right? So, uh, and I think that uh, folks, Kamal, I think from uh, Polar Signals have been involved on hotels. So, you know, uh, it's just that, you know, you, you, I think folks have intersected back and forth through different parts of the project. Uh, metrics, you know, like initially when we had the Prometheus uh, interop discussions again. Uh, I think Frederick and others were also involved. So definitely, but thanks for joining in. Yeah, I, I wanted to interject a little bit too. I, I've, I've written a profiler myself uh, a couple decades ago, uh, back when ARM4 was a new thing. Um, but, you know, many of the devices that Alito made reference to, you know, both mobile devices, uh, increasingly, you know, ARM based uh, server hardware for edge scenarios. Uh, and lots of other sort of SOCs, uh, I would expect would have, you know, ARM, for example, had CP14, coprocessor 14. So you could have a, a Monte Carlo style, you know, profiling, sampling profiler, but instead of using a timer interrupt, you're using TLB hits or TLB cache messes or, or you're, or you're, you know, uh, interrupting on every, on every nth iCache or dcache hit or miss, right? So you can start building profile reports, but not using a timer or using different frequencies of timers for different types of devices, which can vary quite widely. So in discussion of the OTLP format, um, you know, I would want to make, I, I, does anyone have any visibility or could, could anyone comment on, you know, are these things already being talked about as being modeled uh, in an open enough way that, that you know, 
OTLP becomes more of an envelope uh, format, you know, that, that allows for extensibility and for a wide variety of things, or, you know, I wouldn't want to make it overly prescriptive to say time-based profiling or, you know, something like that. Uh, yeah. um, oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Ryan. Ryan, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, I guess, yeah, related to the, the format in general that, yeah, that I think that is definitely the biggest, uh, the biggest priority right now is that we're trying to um, sort of like narrow the, the space of like what the, what it can ultimately be. I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, formats out there that the final format that we settle on eventually will be some you know, it will be some combination of what existed exists, I would say maybe 80% plus, you know, 20% that allows for, you know, what we could add in the future. So for example, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm just using this for example, but like, let's say like PProp, which is already, you know, very popular, the entire of like Golang uses it. So it has the ability to add um, like labels or tags, for example, which allows, you know, it has place in the schema for that, which, and it also has a place in the schema for, um, uh, it, it might not be the most efficient, but for also like adding some ability for like symbolization and being able to, to deal with that. And so, um, you know, if we were doing that, then, you know, there's kind of like, okay, so what doesn't that have that maybe JFR does have, or that, you know, some other format does have? Stuff and finding some kind of, you know, common denominator of what we could do moving forward. If, if you did just have to find a superset, you know, just to, to brainstorm what, with once worked with other protocols in the past of this type um, from yesterday, decade, <laughs> um, same ideas, but, you know, new languages and whatnot, um, you know, you could have an agreed upon superset format, if you will, or, you know, something that, as you mentioned, like roughly hits that 80% or, or ideally encompasses and is broadly enough to encompass all, but then, then you can have, the, the folks that are implementing their end of that protocol, um, you know, to, to, you know, which might be PPROF or might be, you know, Java, the, the Java stuff or flight recorder, or it might be the .NET, um, the, you know, diagnostics of, of AJ. Right. Um, you know, they could, they could define conversion functions or conversion um, filters, you know, that, that would mutate to the, the standard OTLP format. So you, so you get like an agreed upon mutual standard, uh, but you don't have right. to go have people change anything for, from what they're already doing and what's already deployed, which is probably a non-starter. Uh, and then it, it puts the onus on them if they, you know, to, to own their own, um, um, I don't know, this could live in the hotel collector, I suppose, you know, as a, as a, as a processor, um, seems like the right way to do it. But again, um, I guess I guess the hotel profiling group and or the recurring meetings are probably the right place to to get nitty gritty. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I think uh, Ryan again. I think one of the results of the profiling discussions that are ongoing, you know, just started uh, with the discussions coming from KubeCon, uh, is that uh, on hotel at least uh, it'll be good to kind of draft up an OTEP to submit you know as we get closer to that right and and uh, part of that process again has been that you know not only actually defining what are some of the common you know areas that can intersect with otlp but also uh, the semantic conventions that might need to be defined you know specifically addressing ebpf you know types of data right so uh, again lots of cool work there and i'm hoping that we can actually collaborate with other projects you know parka and others which have already been looking at this space um to be able to actually have a well-rounded proposal which is you know meeting the the needs of all the projects that are working on this together uh, I think here, you know, we're, we're a few minutes over, but just to close out, at least, I do think that the, the, the tag observability, like, you know, we exist specifically for this kind of thing. And I think, I think that we can help this overall open effort by cheerleading, you know, by, 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 by broadcasting it, uh, by, by using our own networks um, moving forward to bring more people in and make sure that, you know, people aren't ex inadvertently ex excluded because they just aren't weren't in the know already so right. i do think that that is a role that we have um yeah and again um, i actually i put a link to our issue here that ryan created in the toc 
um, deck as well today and talk to it briefly, again, to just kind of spread awareness that this is a, a topic of discussion that's exciting and, and, and tip of the spear, if you will, for, for where the industry is moving. Yeah. And, and one last thing that I'll add there too, I know we're over is that, um, yeah, so I, I added at the bottom of that, uh, of our meeting notes from when we met on Friday, um, just some like to do's of like things that we can do actionable, you know, writing something down, doing some actual resource and research and like, you know, coming up with results. If the, if anybody here can add to any of that, um, pretty much everything we talked about today is already on there. Um, and if it's not, I'll add it, but um, it would be really helpful to have people from this group help contribute there as well. So, um, so yeah, thanks everybody. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> thanks Ren for leading this effort and pulling everyone together. For sure. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, um, is there anything else before, before we break? I don't know at what point Zoom decides that we're done. I think it's an hour <laughs> to yeah, kick uh, you off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're, we're at five minutes too. So uh, anything else before we drop? All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Henrik, I'll look for, I'll look for the link once you're done with post-production. Um, you know, I wonder if we might just as a, as a parting thought, if we might form a little cabal and when things like, Hey, here's the, you know, here's the proposal, the KP, uh, the hotel, uh, uh, proposal, uh, that's ready for review, you know, we can all blast it out. Or when when we've got a new episode of, of open source news, or is it observable? Um, you know, we could do the same. So um, yeah, that's a clearly, good suggestion, Matt. Uh, clearly, I think for the next open source news, I was going to talk about to the main topic of the discussion will be profiling. So uh, ah. it could be interesting that uh, either Ryan or someone for Polo Signals is part of the, uh, the discussion with Michael. So that could be a very uh, yeah. uh, uh, open discussion and bring and also be also a call to the community say if you want to contribute if you want to get that could be a way of, of uh, I think if you did it in panel format with who you suggested uh, but definitely so, so, someone with some thought leadership um, already demonstrated from the open telemetry uh, universe I don't know if Alalita or others uh, come all uh, whomever you, you could you could suggest a few folks for, for such a panel. Uh, but it would be really great to bring together vendors, you know, open telemetry, and then even an end user. But I, I suspect that's not really requisite here. Um, yeah, we can talk about it more offline. Yeah, I'm happy to, uh, yeah, happy to help there, happy to recommend. Um, or if yeah. it doesn't fit that format, um, uh, Henrik, you know, obviously we could, I think this format we could is just very have short. a panel discussion that we, that we host as a tag. Just... So I think the, the the format of the open source is very short, but it could be interesting to get more inside news about it. But I think if we do an open, like we can call it the ask me anything about profiling, and then we bring four or five people, and then we ask, we wait for to get some questions from the community. I think that will be mm -hmm. also a good way of getting feedback yeah. as well. From... That's great. Yeah, and we can also coordinate with the CNCF marketing uh, folks as well and just make it a CNCF webinar that's featured. Um, yep. So I, you know, we we've had issues. We actually have now issues in our backlog, um, specifically to host webinars and interviews and panel discussions and things like that. So we have we have the framework and the governance in place. We have the platforms in place now, um, you know, so we can just use them, uh, mm -hmm. and, and it'll have quite a reach. So um, thank you everyone for for your thoughts. Uh, we we really filled out the hour. I'll be posting this recording a little bit later today once it's done with post-production. So um, have a great awesome. couple of weeks and we'll see you online. Thank have you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Good work, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye.